Hello. So, I've, um, the last video I did was uh, on hardcore Christianity. This video is basically going to be about a little bit of strategic thinking in, in those terms of, um, you know, how do we win against clown world? You know, we, we live in a crazy world right now where um, um, there was a, a tweet that um, someone sent out, uh, trying to remember the guy's name. Um, anyway, it was something along the lines of um, um, uh, men are women and women are men, but women are great and hear me roar, but men are, can be women and uh, transgender men are women, but men are scum, uh, but women are great. Um, and uh, was it? And uh, but appropriation is evil. Uh, you know, it was just the nonsense words of the absolute left. I mean, uh, it, it's it's hilarious. Alyssa Milano, in order because she wants to kill babies. Alyssa Milano wants to kill babies. That's what she does. Um, so she said, Un unless you let me kill babies, I'm gonna stop having sex. Now, you can only have babies from making sex, so works for us, right? So what Alyssa Milano, in her madness, in her evil madness of wanting to kill babies, what she has uh, rediscovered is chastity, which was, you know, for uh, many centuries, one of the main Christian beliefs, you know, that people shouldn't have sex unless they're gonna spend the rest of their life together and raise their children together. And then some other uh, cretin, also on Twitter, some one of these, you know, whatever, blue feminist whales or whatever they are, um, said something along the lines of, well, uh, if women can't have an abortion and they have to have the consequences of that uh, child for the rest of their lives, then men should have the consequences of, for the rest of their lives too. And the response by somebody on Twitter was, um, Congratulations, you have just invented marriage, <laughs> which, you know, it's gone full circle because these people are so insane that they don't even realize what nonsense they're spouting. Nevertheless, the vast majority of us normal people um, are constantly being harassed, hemmed in, pushed around, bullied and, and sort of shoved into a corner by this kind of idiotic nonsense. Y you can't make a joke now. You can't you can't even quote somebody now without being jailed. I mean, in England, there is a guy who quoted Winston Churchill. All he did was quote Winston Churchill, a statement that Winston Churchill made about Islam and Muslims, and he was jailed for it because apparently it's hate speech, you know. But we've got imams that are going around in London uh, promoting violence, and, you know, that's okay. I mean... We had three or four events of, of um, Islamic um, from the, you know, Muslims ramming people with cars and vans on bridges. And the mayor of London, who's a Muslim and who has associations to the um, very, um, I forgot what it's called, uh, Brotherhood of Islam or something like that. One of these uh, organizations that has got clear ties to terrorism and he had ties to that organization. You know, I, d I don't remember all the details, but anyways, um, just after the attack, he came on, he was on TV and his statement was, we need to build bridges, not walls. Because now in London, you've got all these like short walls all along the side of, of bridges to prevent the next, you know, van attack. Um, you know, that's spitting in the face of the victims and quite clearly making a statement as, as a Muslim mayor, you know. Um, but, you know, you're not allowed to point these things out. You know, that's hate speech if, if, you, if you mention this, apparently. I don't know. I don't know what the consequences of that are. You know, saying the truth, mentioning a fact, you know. And so how do we win against this kind of um, tyranny? of the left, which is, you know, they try and police your thought. And they can never police your thought, of course, but um, they can make things so uncomfortable for you, deplatforming you from any kind of uh, way to earn money, deplatforming you from social media. 
I mean, Facebook has deleted over 20,000 of what they call uh, right-wing or essentially nationalistic accounts on their on, on Facebook in Italy because Salvini is having great uh, a great run his next uh, election is probably going to do very well and uh, and Salvini is a nationalist you know he's putting Italians first which hasn't happened in Italy for you know 70 years since the second world war the Italian government was basically run by a bunch of hoodlums thieves and scumbags who just change the roles between them you know it was like oh this week it's your turn that we next week it's his turn and that's all they did for 70 years now Salvini is the first maybe hope that the Italians have ever had for 70 years so you bet people are voting for him and he's a great guy you know he talks how he thinks and he tells the truth and when he said well why, why are we getting all these ships being sent here why are we getting all these mosques built I want to know you want to be a Muslim, you want to have a mosque, that's fine. I want to know who built it. I want to know where the money comes from, and I want a list of who attends. Because if I go in a Catholic church, there is a list there of who, who's Christian. So I want a list of who is in that um, mosque. You know, and oh, people try to say, oh, he was evil and hate-filled and racist. And you say, no, I want the same rules for everybody. Which is absolutely right. You know, and it's... it's uh, the fact is in Italy my my people are not they don't really care about your political correct bullshit you know but the thing is all those institutions that allowed us to be to have what we had which was Christendom which were countries that had the rule of law countries that had justice countries that taught logic in schools countries that essentially believed in the rule of law, justice, truth, beauty, honor, um, honesty, you know, that, that promoted uh, honesty, all, uh, honor and valor and, and um, recognized these as positive um, uh, qualities, virtues. Nowadays, you know, if you're honest, you get punished. If, you're, if you can do logic, uh, you're a hateful bigot. If you notice a difference between two human beings, you're a racist. You know, again, the simple use of words. What, what do people mean when they say racist? How do you define racism? Now, racism used to mean that you judge the character of a person purely based on his skin color. Now, I agree that that's wrong, right? If you don't know anything about a person except their skin color and on that basis you make a value judgment on that person, that is unfair. I agree, generally speaking. However, there are trends, right? There are trends. Statistics are real things. Now, it's true that you can use statistics to lie if you can't do maths. And you can use statistics to lie to the innumerate but you can't use statistics to lie to people who can actually do maths properly. And statistically, it has been proven for decades now that there is a fifth, roughly a 15 IQ point difference between people of an African origin compared to people of a Caucasian or European origin. And for all of you that are looking at this and thinking that I'm being somewhat, you know, a racist, let me add, there is also Equally valid, equally the same data also proves that Oriental people, and no, I'm not being racist by using the term Oriental, that is the correct geographical terminology, Oriental people, so like the Japanese, Chinese, Koreans, also have a 15 IQ point difference between them and Caucasians. Theirs is higher. So there is one standard deviation of IQ between, if you want to you know, in, in vernacular, blacks and whites. And there's another one standard of deviation between whites and orientals or yellows, you know, if you want to call them that. So that is, broadly speaking, a fact. OK, you can try and deny it as much as you like, but that is a fact. It's an absolute mathematical fact borne out by decades of, of, um, of studies, decades of tests, millions and millions of people that have gone through this this data 
and it bears out the same results again and again and again and again. So does that make me a racist? Now, I've lived in Africa for 25 years and I've, I've visited Japan and I can tell you with absolute confidence that it's absolutely true. The average African does have 15 IQ points less than the average European. And it's absolutely true that the average Japanese has 15 IQ points more than the average European. I've been into both places and I can tell you right now, that's a fact. Now, if that upsets you, if the reality of that upsets you, that's on you. Okay, that, that doesn't make me a racist, doesn't mean anything. Now, if you know this, right, if you know this, and then you make a value judgment on a person because you say, oh, well, they've got a black skin, so they're probably dumber than me. Is that fair? It probably isn't fair because you don't know that person, but it's reasonable, okay? And eventually, if you, if you have that attitude throughout your life, you will eventually come short. I, I, I can give one example, for example, when I, um, I was studying engineering and we had a brilliant maths teacher. Um, and again, just so you know, he wasn't white. He was a mixed race guy and he was, I think, number three in the world uh, because he went to competitions and whatever. Now, keep in mind that this guy was born under apartheid in South Africa where he was classed as a second class citizen. I was the first white guy to go through a so-called all black institution. And um, so it was a lot tougher for him, you know, economically, socially, you know, and yet this guy managed to go to these international symposiums or, or sort of uh, competitions of mathematicians. And I think he was number three in the world uh, or, or thereabouts or some big competitions. I don't remember the details, but he was definitely world class and in the top of the world class. And he was an absolute brilliant teacher. I mean, this guy could teach calculus to monkeys. And again, I'm not being racist. I mean monkeys with a tail and fur, okay? In his class, watching him and listening to him explain something on a blackboard, you knew calculus. I used to know calculus. I don't now because I forgot about it. I haven't used it in like almost, you know, 20 odd years, almost 30 years now. Um, so off the top of my head, I can't do calculus. But when when I was in, in his class, I, I could, and I was good at maths. I've always been pretty decent at it. Um, and, you know, in engineering, you get bending moment calculations, which are some of the longest and most difficult calculations that you get in any uh, discipline um, of the hard sciences. These are like 40 plus operations to get to one, one uh, result. And each operation is not like, you know, plus or minus an operation I mean a cluster of square root of times by the power of and whatever. So I got to an answer and this other tall black guy, Tsonga, it was, he was a, a Tsonga, there was only two Tsonga in our class and he could hardly speak English and he comes up to me and he goes, hey white man, show me your, your result so we can compare. And I showed him my number and his number was different and he looked at it and he goes, no, you're wrong, you made a mistake. And I, in that moment, in my mind, I'm like, look at this fucking guy, you know, he can barely speak fucking English. He probably doesn't even know what fucking running water is. He hasn't got a clue. And he's telling me that I'm the fucking idiot that messed up. But I'm polite, if nothing else. So I said, okay, well, let's go through it together. You know, let's look so we can see who made the mistake where. But I was, in my mind, I was being polite because I was absolutely sure that I got it right and he got it fucking wrong. And it was because, you know, the guy can hardly speak English. He's some random black guy from some, you know, God forsaken part of the country where, where they don't even have much electricity or running water. How can this guy possibly have got it right and me got it wrong? So we go through it and I said, okay, look here, we've got the same, then we've got the same, then we've got the same. And here is the difference. And you see that you're, uh, oh, fuck, I'm wrong. And in that moment, I realized, shit, that, that was that was wrong of me. I just assumed he was wrong because of what I thought he came from and where I thought he came from. And I haven't made that mistake again. You know, I judge people on the, on the individual and that's what everybody should do. But generalizations are still facts, right? Short people are mostly evil. It's just, you know, 
Owen knows this, Owen Benjamin knows this, you know. And I mean, look, Vox is not a huge tall guy, you know, he's like 5'10", so he's like borderline, and he's kind of kind of evil, you know. I'm six foot two, so I'm the perfect human. You know, and, you know, these things aside, the point is, generalizations are still facts. Now, the vast majority of people are not insane. The vast majority of people do not believe that a man is a woman and that a transgender woman, man, slash whatever, is a real woman, slash man, whatever. No, if you're a man, you're a man, you're a woman, you're a woman. Now, you can cut your dick off and pretend to have plastic tits. You're still a man. You're just a mutilated man and, you know, you're mentally ill. It doesn't make you a woman. So, but how do you, you know, sort of go against this because it's being pushed by the media, it's being pushed by government, it's being pushed by laws, it's being pushed in every direction. So the, the way to do this, the way to fight this is Christianity and hardcore Christianity. Now, if you're an agnostic, if you're an atheist or whatever, bear with me a second. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little thought experiment. Let's pretend that all religions, all of them, are bullshit. You know, I believe that for a long time. So let's assume all religions are bullshit. Let's say that that's just for our thought experiment, that that's a fact. Okay. Now, if that's a fact, you have to admit that either liars, con men, or crazy people have shaped this planet. And in reality, you'd have to say crazy people. Because if you look... For example, just at the history of Christianity, right? If you look at Jesus, or if you look at the, even better, if you look at the martyred saints, the martyred Christian saints, there is no way that you can say these guys were con men, all right? They believed what they believed, so they'd have to be crazy, right? You, you could say they're crazy or they're wrong, but you can't say they're liars because, you know, there are scores of um, Christian saints that and some of them really famous ones that march to their death willingly rather than deny Jesus Christ now you're not going to do that if you're a con man you know if you're just spouting off bullshit just you know like uh, whatever Sai Baba you know the guy who like fucks little kids and and gets a bunch of money because he's supposedly some guru incarnation of whatever or that, uh, that other con woman, Amma, you know, the, the hugging saint who, um, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but there's a lot of con men in the religious world. You know, the televangelists that like, throw your wallet up for Jesus and whatever comes back down goes to me. What stays up, you can keep, you know, that kind of shit. Those people are just in it for the money. There isn't a single one of those guys that would walk willingly to their death in order not to deny Jesus Christ, right? And uh, Catholic history has hundreds of these guys. I mean, some of them are fathers of the saint of the of the church. And again, I'm not talking about you know a guy who, in a moment of madness, says, "You know what? Fuck it! I'm in the arena anyway. I'm gonna be eaten by lions. I'm just gonna walk dignified straight to the lions so I get eaten." No, I'm talking about guys who walked for a year towards Rome just so they could be put to death because they were the bishop of a, an important church in the Middle East. And they were told by the, the representative of the Roman emperor that if they did not cease their heresy, they would be put to death. And um, because you have to understand that initially Christians were considered heretics because they denied the uh, divinity of the emperor and the divinity of the Greek and Roman pantheon. So they were assumed to be, you know, vicious heretics and they were put to death. They were burnt. I mean, Nero lit Rome with the burning bodies of Christians. You know, he literally had them be used as Roman candles. He, he set men on fire, crucified them and set them on fire alive um, just to, to light the streets. So it wasn't a mild form of persecution. It was the, you know, very vicious persecution. And one of the, um, again, I'm, I'm terrible with names, you know, I'm good at remembering stuff and, and people's faces, but names I'm, I'm horrible at. One of the patristic fathers of the church was a bishop um, in one of the Middle Eastern churches. I can't remember if it was Antioch or one of those. Anyways, and, you know, he, he received this message, which is like, stop preaching the stuff or you'll be put to death. 
And he said, I'm not going to stop preaching this stuff. So you're going to have to put me to death. And I'm going to walk my way to uh, Rome and the Colosseum where they will have me eaten by lions. And it basically took him a year. And we know this because there are letters that he wrote and the people wrote to him en route because, you know, they, they knew that this was happening. And, you know, there was no internet then, but we still have these documents. I mean, there's like volumes of information uh, of letters between the Patristic Fathers and, and so on from the year like 33 to the year 200. There's volumes of this stuff. You know, most people don't aren't aware of it. But if you go and look for it and read it, you'll see it's amazing, amazing correspondence, amazing letters. So we know that these guys existed. Um, you know, I'm not even talking about Jesus. I'm talking about normal guys who were put to death for their belief. I mean, when I um, got baptized, I took on the name, you know, when you when you get baptized, you, I might have it here, so I'm going to, uh, uh, somewhere else. Well, when you get baptized, you can take on the name of a saint, and then when you get confirmed, you again can take the name on, of, of a saint. When I got uh, confirmed, I took the name of um, Adrianus, which is a patron saint of warriors. And his, um, you know, this guy was employed, he was one of the emperor's guard, and his job was to kill and torture to death Christians so that they would denounce Jesus Christ. And while he was standing over, watching over, he was the captain of the guard, I believe. So he, while he was standing over the, um, the torturing and killing of these Christians, he was so impressed by the fact that these guys would not repent that he converted then and then to Christianity. And he was tortured and put to death for it. And, um, and he didn't flinch. So he was made patron saint of, of warriors. Now, so getting back to my original point, you have to understand that Christianity and most of the other religions, if all religion is bullshit, our planet has marched on on the madness of crazy people. Right? Crazy people have essentially shaped this planet. And again, let's continue with this idea that every religion is bullshit. Okay, If every religion is bullshit and crazy people have shaped this world, then the next thing you've got to ask yourself is, which of these crazy fuckers is the least crazy? Which of these crazy fuckers has created a system? First of all, do any of these systems last? Now, again, if you look at all the religions that have happened since the beginning of time that, that we know of, most of them have failed. A lot of them have failed. So most of them, no. But some of them have lasted a very long time. Christianity is one of the very oldest. Hinduism is very old, older than Christianity. Buddhism, older than Christianity. Um, Islam, Islam is, is, is one of those religions that is, is deceptive because Islam is a lot younger than Christianity, of course, but um, you know it's lasted centuries. The, the thing with Islam is that it, it is not sustainable unless it continues to expand. And eventually, you know, there has to come a, sh a, a clash, a, either a clash of Islam against everybody else, or if they take over the whole world, then it will be against them, each other, themselves, because uh, Islam is a little bit like Nazism. You know, Nazism achieved some spectacular things. I mean, the Nazis were responsible for inventing um, uh, jet engines, um, stealth technology, some technology to do with creating energy that we still haven't mastered. There are some top secret documents uh, relating to that. I might have one somewhere here to, to show possibly. No, I, I don't know. I still have to organize all my. I still have to organize my my library. But you know, the, because the Nazis were had almost unlimited funds and unlimited manpower, they created some amazing technology because madmen had free run of money, technology, manpower, etc. And they did create some pretty amazing technology. But Nazism, as, a, as, a, as, a, as it was done in the Second World War, was absolutely unsustainable because it uh, operated on slave labor and an economy that made no sense. Islam is somewhat the same, it's just slower and less efficient than Nazism, so it'll take longer for, for this to be borne out, but ultimately that's where it's going.
But the point, again, to come back to the original point, is uh, some of these supposedly crazy people have created systems that lasted a very long time. And of all of these, Christianity is the nicer of the lot. Uh, it caused the liberation of women, it caused the ending of slavery, it caused the equality of people in terms of their value in the eyes of God, if not you know, in the world, because in the world we are all different. But uh, from a spiritual perspective, we all have the same value, potentially. So Christianity is the best of these crazy people religion, right? Now, you also have to accept something else. If crazy people have uh, shaped this planet's society and, and world, and have done so for millennia, well, it just isn't going to change, all right? And... If you're one of these atheists that thinks, no, but reason will prevail. Well, let me just remind you that the times that humanity tried to have no religion caused more death in 70 years than was caused by all the religious wars put together of all history going up to that point. If you take all the wars that were caused because of religion, which is only about 7% of all wars, and um, you know, if you don't believe my, my numbers, um, read the book The Irrational Atheist by Vox Day. He's got the data in there. Only 7% of all wars, according to you know the calculation of the Encyclopedia of Wars, was ever done by religion for religious reasons. Of those, half of those were caused by Islam. So but what is not mentioned is that the wars of so-called secular leaders like Mao Zedong and Stalin and Pol Pot, who wanted to abolish religion because it was the opiate of the masses, those guys killed more people in the last 70 years than all the other religious wars put together. Okay, That's quite an achievement. So if you're going to go with reason, I'm going to say no thanks. I'm going to stick with the crazy Christians, right? Because if you are logical, if you are truly objective, then surely you should be for the greater good, right? Assuming you're not just an evil asshole that wants to try and get everything for himself. You know, in that case, you're going to say, yeah, uh, Stalin's way was great, as long as you're Stalin, right? Because if you're one of the underlings, you're just going to get done in. So, you know, if you're a decent human being, regardless of your religious or lack of religious beliefs, Christianity is still the best option. Okay, it doesn't, even if you don't believe it, that would be what you'd want to live under. You'd want to live under a nice, hardcore, good Catholic Christians. Why? Because they respect the uh, right of other people not to believe their religion. Okay, They're not going to put you to death if you're uh, an atheist or, or, or an agnostic. They will put you to death if you try and pervert their uh, religion. But as long as you know, you don't cause any way, you don't cause any trouble. Even if you're a, a Muslim, you can be in a Christian land and not, you're not going to be killed just for being a Muslim. You know, you're not going to be trusted. You're not going to be given any kind of power because you've got your own Muslim countries to go and live in if you want to, and that's fine. But my point is, regardless of your belief system, the point is that clown world gets pushed back by Christianity. Now, what kind of Christianity, right? Not Protestantism, because there are 40,000 denominations of that. And Protestants will rather argue with each other about some passage in the Bible than create a united front. Again, let's look at history as an indicator, as a statistical indicator of what works. Why did Christendom exist? What allowed Christendom to exist? Catholics. Catholic knights that went and fought the crusades and pushed back the saracens catholics that resisted the siege of malta in the fifth in the 16th century and allowed malta not to be taken over which allowed europe not to be taken over and created allowed christendom to exist now do you think that you could have called a crusade if all the so-called christians of the time in the year 1095 were all house churches or were you know baptists of one denomination and uh, anglican of another and so on. no 
The thing about being Catholic was that until relatively recently, until about 70 years ago, you could go in any country on the planet that had a Catholic church, you could go to Mass on Sunday, and the Mass would be absolutely familiar to you because it was completely the same. Whether you were in Vietnam, uh, India, Europe, America, South America, Australia, or New Zealand, you went into a Catholic church on Sunday and you'd have Mass in Latin and it would all be exactly the same. Your missile that you used when in your country where you spoke, say, Italian, and you're now whatever, either in a war or a foreign correspondent or working somewhere else, and you're now in China where you don't speak a word of the local language, you go to a Catholic church and your missile works and the, 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 the ritual of the mass is exactly the same. That was absolutely true until about 70 years ago or in the 1960s when uh, the Novus Orco you know, they, they call it Novus Ordo, New Ore, but it, it's really Novus Orco, the New Orcs. When the New Orcs instilled the, the, the New Orc Mass, which, you know, became a trivialized, a, a, um, a mockery of the real Mass, then that no longer applied. But for millennia, for over a thousand years, this was the truth of the Catholic Church. So when a Pope said, we're now going to go on a crusade, Everybody said, yeah, okay, because they were all Catholics. There pretty much wasn't anything else. And even the recent schism that had happened between East and West, which, you know, the schism that happened between the, the, the Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church is a little bit like a long-distance relationship. You know, the distance and so on didn't, didn't help. And then these three bishops that had no authority excommunicated the emperor and the emperor excommunicated them back and so on. But... Um, the point is that the Orthodox Church and the, and the real Catholic Church, not the Bergoglian heresy, uh, you know, the, not the Satanists that have the Novus Orco now, the, the, the real Catholics and the, and the real Orthodox, you know, they're not that far apart. The things that uh, differentiates them are things like the filioque, which, you know, for you and me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. So the way to fight back against clown world is two things, Christianity and city-states because it's Christianity and community, and that starts with family. So if you're a young man watching this, understand something. I've been young, I've been crazy, I've been a wild ass kind of character, didn't believe in any religion. And I'm talented, I'm quick, I'm smart, you know, not very polite, but I got fucking good reflexes, so that's why I'm still around. So. I did okay, you know, but it's only once you realize the importance of family. And family has been attacked by clown world. Family is what's being attacked by clown world. Make no mistake, the best thing you can do in life is find the right person, get married, have children, raise them, protect them, teach them, educate them, be strong as a family. And they will make children and they will look after each other and you and you look after them and that's family that's community and when you have an area where all the people there all believe this this way they all believe in picking one person marrying that one person staying with them no matter what once you've picked them that's it you go to the grave together just think what that does to you for a moment just think you know how, how, how much harder would you have to think yeah before you just bang somebody, if you knew that once you put your dick in it, it's yours for life. And if you let somebody put your dick in it, you know, girls, he's the guy for life. Imagine that. Now, if that happens, right? And, and there used to be a time when this was normal, you know? That's why the Catholic Church, although Bergoglio is trying to change it now with the easy annulments or whatever, you know, but... He's, he's not a Christian, you know, Bergoglio is, is a Satanist and uh, that, that has to just be accepted. Um, but real Catholics, you know, the Catholics have always believed marriage is for life. That's it. Once you're married, it, it stays and you stay together and you raise kids together no matter what. She becomes a cheating whore and you become a drunk alcoholic, doesn't matter. You stay married and you raise kids. 
Why? Because you say, oh, but you know, what if she becomes really abusive? Yeah, and what if she becomes really abusive? You know, so there's no, don't think, you know, that all this women first and the women abuse of women, you know, there are the laws and the books protect women far more than, they've, than they protect men. Um, if you're a Caucasian male in today's world, you're the least protected person under the law in almost every country on earth. So don't, don't think that, um, you know, family is what matters. And again, the lies that you've been told, and I'm, I'm speaking right now mostly to women, although I think my audience is probably mostly men. If you're a woman and you've been told, oh, you can do just what a man does. No, first of all, you can't. Second, you're not happy. You're not happy trying to be a man. A woman is not happy trying to be a man with tits. It just doesn't work. A woman is happiest being a mother and raising kids and being a woman. And it's, um, you know, that the, the guy I watch quite a lot of, Owen Benjamin, talks about this a lot because he, he, Owen Benjamin is like a unicorn, you know. That guy had fame, had achieved a level of, of, of money and fame that he was like on the cusp of becoming extremely wealthy. And he turned his back on all of it because he saw the lies. And he is a unicorn because he, he was in that Hollywood world and he turned his back on it with at great hardship, just continues to tell the truth, bought himself some land, which is still paying off and worked his ass off and created a homestead and he's got goats and he farms food and him and his wife are, are raising two kids and they're going to try for a third now and and it's family and he's become friends with his neighbors and he's near his wife's family so that there is an extended family that's what it's about you know and that's what normal people want and, you know, and I don't care who you are you know if you happen to be a gamma that's pissed off right now because I'm smarter than you I've got a pretty wife I've got kids of you know I'm happy essentially in my life and you know don't get me wrong there's, there's all sorts of ugly shit in everybody's life you know there's there's painful stuff in everyone's life but you know if you're some little gamma that's sort of envious and angry because you haven't achieved shit in your life or if you're some blue-haired fat lesbian who's like really oh uh, what a misogynistic evil pig that you think I am Here's the thing, no matter who you are, what everybody on this planet wants is to be loved and to be able to love. Okay, to be with somebody that actually loves you, that really cares about you, and that you care about them. And together you make children and you care about those children. Now, are there some people that hate that? Yes, there are. They're mentally ill, okay? They're, they're damaged human beings. They can be evil. They will try and ruin you and hurt you and whatever. And again, you know, let me put it in a much simpler, you know, graphic way. If a crazy person with an axe breaks into your house and wants to kill you, your children, your wife, are you entitled to shoot him in the face and turn his head into a pink cloud? Yes, of course you are. Of course you should do that. Now, the fact that he was mentally ill, the fact that maybe he was abused as a kid, the fact that all sorts of horrific shit might have happened to him, doesn't change the fact that the minute he tries to harm you, you're absolutely entitled to defend yourself and to do so with extreme prejudice. Now, this is kind of the same thing, right? These damaged people who are angry and vicious and are trying to tear your life apart just because they don't want you to, like, you know, call them a man when because they cut their dick off and they want to pretend to be a woman and they, they're trying to force you to call them a woman and or, or you know, Bruce Jenner wants you to call him Caitlyn and, and you're going to go to jail if you don't call him Caitlyn. And fuck you, Bruce, I'd rather go to jail, you know? Because you have to understand that these people are absolutely human wreckage. But that doesn't excuse them doing you harm. So you got to push back. Does that mean you do that with hatred? No. You know, the crazy guy that breaks into your house, on, uh, hypothetically, the crazy guy that breaks into your house with an axe and you turn his head into a pink cloud. You know, once that's done, danger's done. You know, say a Hail Mary, pray for his soul. Bury him and go to sleep easy. That's what being a Christian is about. It's not about hating anybody. It's about protecting your own 
having a family, protecting your wife, protecting your kids. That's what it's about. And the best way to do that is as either a real, original, pre-Vatican II Catholic, possibly an Orthodox, possibly a Copt. Why do I say this? Because again, keep in mind, you can't change the world on your own. Now, imagine if everybody that you know would go to the same church and understand the same Mass and understand the same ritual and agreed with it. That's a force to be reckoned with. And that's what the, uh, you know, the Satanists, the enemy, because remember, we're behind enemy lines. You know, whether you believe in religion or not, whether you think we're all crazy, we Christians or not, doesn't matter. The reality is we are behind enemy lines and, and the enemy is trying to destroy the family unit. So the best thing you can do is be a family unit. What goes with that? Well, being a Catholic goes with that. Being a Catholic, it's still the only Christian denomination that says you're not allowed to get a divorce. It's the only Christian denomination that says you shouldn't use contraception. And, you, you know, I used to think that was stupid and evil. I'm on record, you know, in my book, The Face on Mars, I said, you know, that the Pope is an idiot because he still thinks that contraception is wrong. And he was the fake Pope. He was Ratzinger at the time, I think. But um, regardless, I was wrong. You know, contraception is wrong. And I'm not a great Christian, you know. I, I, I'm not saying that I'm going to do my utmost to make sure I have 12 kids. I don't use contraception. I'm not going to. Neither does my wife, neither is she going to. <coughs> and she's she's a little bit even more hardcore than I am. <laughs> and, you know, I'm the one that that sort of found this path, sort of let her down it sort of thing. But, um, you know, she, she certainly came willingly. It's not like she wasn't forced into, in, into it. But um, in many ways, she's more of a hardcore Catholic than I am. And she's newer at it than I am, so certainly read a lot less about it. But she instinctively, you know, women have an instinctive spiritual dimension she instinctively feels what's right and what's good for her and um, so imagine now forget about the the connotations that you attach to catholicism or orthodoxy or or being a copt because you all have this baggage that's probably almost entirely got nothing to do with the reality of christianity the thing is think about it do you really think that you would not get along with one of the guys who went on a crusade? You know, there's a brilliant book that I'm reading at the moment, and um, uh, I'm going to find the title and I'll put it below the, the video. But it's basically what would happen, you know, if um, in the something like 13th century, um, advanced aliens land in, in an English hamlet and they get their ass kicked by these sort of fanatical like, Christians. <laughs> and um, and then it's like these swashbuckling sort of crusaders take over their ship and take over, you know, <clears throat> it's a really good story. It, never mind the swashbuckling part. What's brilliant is that the, the writer of this book had a very clear understanding of Christian thinking and how Christianity was in those days and how important it was to everything that happened in day-to-day -day life. And it translates it to, you know, this sort of advanced race of, of beings that uh, don't have Christianity. And it's, it's really, it's a very interesting book. And my point is simply this. If you have um, a belief that unites you together, and I do believe it has to include rituals. I do believe it has to include the mass. I do believe it has to include the specifics because... You know, you can all say, oh, well, we're all brothers under Christ. And we are, you know. I mean, I've got, like, Protestant friends that I believe are Christians. I've got Orthodox friends that I believe are Christians. I, I know so-called Catholics that I, I'm absolutely positive are not Christians of any sort. And so I understand the human side of it. But from a strategic point of view, it would be best if you pick one and and then, you know, create your community around it. So... You know, if you're a hardcore Baptist and, and you know, being illiterate as Baptists are, um, surround yourself by other illiterates like yourself and create your own little community of Baptists and that'll work well for you. I mean, look at the Amish, you know. The Amish don't have got great communities. You know, they, they've, uh, they don't use cars and they've got a shitload of land. 
they farm their own animal, they've got their own crops, they've got their own food, and they've got their own gold. They buy a shitload of gold. And oh yeah, they're the backwards idiots. Yeah, they are making a lot of kids and uh, they seem to be pretty happy. So I'm not telling you that you have to become a Catholic or an Orthodox. It would be preferable and it would be easier for you because probably there's more real Orthodox at the moment than there are real Catholics. Um, but either one, you know. So that's the way out of clown world. Hardcore Christianity. You know, that's, um, that's the message for this video. And uh, again, you know, I, I could go on about this stuff for, for a long time. So let me know in the comments if there's other topics you want me to, to cover. And, you know, if you like my videos, spread them around. You know, send them to your friends, put them on Facebook or whatever. See if they get you banned somewhere, you know. <laughs> That's it for now.